Hello, today I will discuss about Pencos tumor. The Pencos tumor is also called apical lung neoplasm. These are malignant tumors at the apex of the lung. So we have two lungs. the right lung and the left lung left lung and at the apex of the lung we have tumor okay so these are the malignant lung tumor at the apex of the lung okay. it may be on the right lung or maybe in the left lung right lung this is left lung okay it is also called superior sulcus tumor superior sulcus tumor because it is above the sulcus for the superior vena cava on the right lung above the impression for the arch of the aorta on the left lung so on the mediastinal surface with the impression for superior vena cava impression for the arch of the aorta so the tumors are located above that okay it is usually unilateral it may be bilateral on very rare occasion so this is a malignant lung tumor at the apex of the lung so it may be of any variety of lung cancer. It may be small cell lung cancer, lung cancer. It may be large cell lung, lung, lung cancer, or it may be just squamous cell carcinoma. carcinoma or it may be adenocarcinoma okay usually the adult person who has history of smoking so history of smoking history of smoking for a long time and and typical patient is a chain smoker okay so history of smoking is important factor so this is the cancer at the apex of the lung this is the apex this is the base of the lung okay so so this that there is a tumor or cancer is present here certain structure may be involved suppose this is the trachea okay we have the trachea here if you go to the this is So the tumor may involve the trachea. There's a tumor here. Tumor. This is the tumor. It may involve the trachea. It may involve the recurrent laryngeal nerve because we know that recurrent laryngeal nerve passes between the trachea and esophagus. So 
the following structures may be involved following structures may be involved what are those structures number one trachea then recurrent laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve okay shoulder joint shoulder joint the sympathetic chain of ganglion sympathetic chain of ganglion at the cervical thoracic region cervical thoracic region and there may be okay so you got that involvement of the brachial plexus especially the the lower trunk of the brachial plexus and the ulna nerve the lower trunk of the brachial plexus and ulna nerve we can say lower trunk of the brachial plexus lower trunk and and ulna nerve ulna nerve comes out of the lower trunk okay we have this structure may be involved so what are the sign symptoms sign symptoms depends on how many structure and what structure is involved we may add few more thing there will be bony involvement involvement of the first and second rib and also we may have involvement of the vertebra vertebral body in the cervical thoracic region okay so if you go to know the sign symptoms of pencos tumor it depends on what is the size of the pencos tumor if it involves the trachea okay then we may have dyspnea difficult in breathing dyspnea if it involves the recurrent laryngeal nerve okay if it is recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement laryngeal nerve involvement then there will be hoarseness of voice hoarseness of voice okay and we might have shoulder pain shoulder pain we can say pain in the upper extremity pain in the upper extremity shoulder and and the lower part of the, of the upper limb upper pain the upper limb including the shoulder okay then there may be involvement of sympathetic chain of ganglion like that of the stellate ganglion or cervical thoracic ganglion stellate ganglion also called cervical thoracic ganglion ganglion okay so if this is involved then we may our patient will show the features of horner syndrome this is very important Horner syndrome due to involvement of the cervical thoracic ganglion. Cervical thoracic ganglion is a sympathetic ganglion, fused ganglion of the inferior cervical sympathetic ganglion, 
and phosphorus-6 sympathetic ganglion. It is in front of the transverse process of seven cervical vertebra. And if this ganglion is involved, then we will get Horner syndrome. And the features of Horner syndrome are ptosis. Ptosis is the drooping of the upper eyelid. Upper eyelid droops down due to paralysis of the superior tertial muscle that is innervated by the postganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers. So there will be ptosis due to paralysis of the superior tertial muscle. Then we get meiosis. Meiosis again due to lack of sympathetic innervation to the head and neck. Here, what will happen? There will be meiosis. Why there is meiosis? Because the dilatory pupillary muscle is innervated by the sympathetic postganglionic nerve fiber. Dilatory pupillary muscle cannot dilate. So the sphincter pupillary muscle innervated by the by the oculomotor nerve it will work. So the dilatory function of the pupillary will not work. Sphincter pupillary muscle will work. So there will be meiosis or constriction of the pupil. Okay. Tosis drooping of upper eyelid. Drooping of upper eyelid. Okay. Meiosis, that is constriction of pupil, constriction of pupil of the eye. Pupil is a gap in the in the center of the iris. Okay. Then we get the anhydrosis. Anhydrosis that means lack of sweating of the head and neck because the sympathetic innervation to the head and neck is cut. So, hydration that is lack of sweating of the affected side. Affected side of the head and neck. Then, number four will get the inophthalmos. Inophthalmos. Number four is the enophthalmos. That means sinking of the eyeball. Eyeball will, will be sink back. Okay, because the eyeball the orbit has sock the, the orbital socket has some soft tissue. These are dependent on sympathetic innervation. Without sympathetic innervation, the socket for the eye will be shrink. So there will be inophthalmos. Eyeball will push back. So we'll get the, the Horner syndrome due to lack of sympathetic innervation to the head and neck region. Okay. We got Horner syndrome. Now we get the, the involvement of the brachial plexus. So brachial plexus involvement and especially the lower trunk of brachial plexus of brachial plexus and its root value is C8 T1. Okay so and the most common nerve is involved there is the ulnar nerve, ulnar nerve. So this person with pancostema will have pain, numbness, tingling along the medial side of the upper extremity going to the intrinsic muscles of the hand like the interosseum muscle and to medial lumbrical muscle. So person will have claw hand, claw hand due to involvement of the lower trunk of brachial plexus, we may get 
flow of time plus we may get initially pain then we'll get tingling numbness along the medial border of the of the forearm and the and the and the interosseous region of the of the hand and also involvement of the two lumbrical muscle dorsal interosseous muscle and the palmar interosseous muscle okay we get that then there may be bony pain bony pain because erosion of bone the first rib second rib erosion of first and second rib okay so there is there is a possibility then vertebral involvement that may also cause pain in the back vertebral involvement back and also in cervical region lower cervical region and also in the thoracic region vertebral involvement and it may go inside the vertebral canal and may involve the the spinal cord on rare occasion okay it may not be confined to the vertebra only it may go inside the vertebral canal okay, we got the features of pancos tumor and there may be possible possible sign symptoms depending on the size of the tumor okay how we can diagnose that diagnosis by means of chest x-ray chest x-ray and the CT scan or MRI okay that will easily diagnose the tumor the apex of the lung okay we got that so how to manage this patient management management should be done by the registered physician okay like that uh, management with multiple management for the apical lung cancer one is the radiotherapy radiotherapy chemotherapy chemotherapy and surgery surgery so that's all about pancos tumor if you like my video please support my channel please subscribe me please share the information with your friends and have a nice day bye now